NASA is the most advanced space program in the world. It's the only one to have successfully visited every single planet in the solar system, as well as the only one to have put humans on the moon. But when talking about NASA, people usually stick to talking about its achievements in space. And don't get me wrong, NASA has done some incredible things, but they do a lot more. When asked what NASA does for the average person, many people ignore the question entirely, or go off on some vague NASA is unlocking the secrets of the universe speech. I've never really understood this. Space exploration has and will continue to bring real benefits to the average person that go well beyond scientific curiosity, but these are often ignored. This leads to people wanting NASA to be defunded, thinking they do nothing but play with toys in space. And this notion is only added to by seemingly irrational decisions NASA occasionally makes, like the recent cancellation of the Viper rover, the most important mission of the decade other than Artemis III. Of course, the main reason Viper was cancelled was budget concerns. NASA just doesn't get enough funding, mainly because people don't see the point in giving it more money. I'm here to hopefully fix this mentality that NASA is useless. What exactly does NASA do for you? What benefits does having NASA around give to the average person? I'm not talking about scientific value, because as much as things like exoplanets are interesting, knowing whether or not a planet 100 light years away is water vapor in its atmosphere, or whether there's a subsurface ocean under Europa doesn't affect the average person at all. I'm talking about ways NASA has directly made your life better, and how it will continue to do so in the near future, and so needs more funding, not less. First, and most obviously, satellites. There are over 10,000 satellites in Earth orbit, and from what I can tell, about two-thirds of them are American-owned or owned by an American company. Satellites benefit you in obvious ways, like giving you GPS and internet access, but it goes much deeper than that. There's a good chance that you rely on satellites to stay alive. The invention of satellites has hugely increased the agricultural yield of humanity. Satellite monitoring of crops and farms have allowed us to optimize our crop yields, which has led to a massive increase in food production. Earth monitoring satellites partly help feed you and livestock. Without satellites, you wouldn't have nearly the amount of food we have today, and you can thank NASA for most of them. NASA and other space agencies, like the previous Soviet space program, are the reason satellite monitoring is so advanced. And constant satellite surveillance of our world does more than just help increase crop yields. At this point, there are so many satellites that every square inch of Earth has been mapped and photographed. That's how Google Earth exists, by the way. And because satellites observe the same parts of Earth again and again, we get a complete look at exactly how Earth is changing. Cloud cover, weather patterns, vegetation distribution, bacteria in the ocean, CO2 levels, sea levels, all of it, constantly monitored by NASA and other space agencies. It's because of NASA that we know for an absolute fact that climate change is occurring and that it's caused by humans. And these satellites don't just see how Earth is changing, they can also help make solutions. They can see what areas are most vulnerable to what changes, and show what issues related to climate change we should be stopping and where. If it weren't for NASA and other agencies constantly monitoring Earth, then we would literally have no idea what's going on with climate change and be in a much, much worse position than we already are. There's also disaster relief. Satellites can image natural disaster sites, showing the true scope of the damage and what needs to be fixed. They have a unique vantage point, and so can see things like hurricanes from above in advance to tell people what areas are going to be affected and how severely. Satellite monitoring of Earth has directly saved lives, hundreds of thousands of them. Then, of course, there's the military aspect. This mostly falls under the jurisdiction of the Air Force and the Space Force, not NASA, but it's because of NASA that satellite technology is advanced as it is, so I'm including it. The US and other nuclear powers have early warning nuclear satellites in Earth orbit that watch for signs of nuclear launches. If a nuclear weapon is ever launched, we'll know within a matter of minutes because of nuclear warning satellites. Without satellites like this, the US and other nuclear powers would have a much harder time seeing if their enemies have launched a nuclear strike. Imagine a Cold War where the US and Soviet Union had a chance to strike before their opponent could even have a chance to retaliate. That would throw mutually assured destruction right out the window and make a nuclear war something a country could actually win, which is terrifying. I genuinely think that nuclear satellites have deterred the start of a nuclear war to such a degree that if we didn't have them, there's a good chance nuclear Armageddon would have already happened. So, just satellites alone have fed millions of people, saved lives, connected the world via the internet, helped us solve climate change, and have possibly helped us avoid the literal end of the world. And we're far from done yet. Satellite technology is constantly improving, and all the benefits I just mentioned will only increase the more NASA develops it. Satellites alone are more than enough reason to keep NASA well-funded, but we can go further. NASA does a lot more than just satellites. NASA's human spaceflight program is the best in the world, and has again been a good thing for the average person. The International Space Station has been studying things like medicine for years now, and everything from crop science to biotechnology. 
Research done on the ISS has directly improved global medicine, from giving us insights on the aging process and cell functions to using zero gravity to make medicine more effective. However, the impacts of the ISS compared to satellites in general have been less drastic. Simply because the ISS isn't very big, difficult to maintain, and can only hold a crew of seven. So, while you have seen benefits from the ISS, they haven't been as much as satellites. Luckily, this is changing, as multiple commercial space stations, which are being created directly because of the advances in space station technology made by NASA, are being built. As soon as the commercial space stations start going up as early as this decade, which I plan to make a full video about, the amount of research and benefits you'll get from having humans in space will explode. If only 7 people in space has already made advancements in medical science, imagine what 15 people in space could do, 20, or 50. Based on how things are currently going, in my opinion, there could be as many as 50 people in space at once in just a few decades. A sevenfold increase from the ISS, meaning at least 7 times the scientific output. And that number will likely be even higher, because these new stations will have more cutting edge and modern technology than the aging ISS. Orbital factories producing medicine and fiber optic cables, both of which are more effective in space due to the lack of gravity eliminating imperfections, could become real things in the relatively near future. Artificial organs produced in space are also less likely to be rejected by the body during a transplant, so yet again, space development can and will save lives. So, space stations have yet to reach their full potential, but what the ISS has already done is made big advancements in the field of medicine, and things will only get bigger as more space stations are developed. But if we want more space stations faster, NASA needs more funding, not less. Space stations are not just for science that has no impact on you. Space stations can and will make your life better. Fiber optic cables made in space make the internet run faster. Some types of medicine are more effective when produced in space. Artificial organs are less likely to collapse when made in space, making them easier to be put into people. The creation of space stations will allow for a medical revolution. Satellite technology has already matured, but we're at the beginning of something huge in the realm of space stations. But to get it done fast, NASA needs more money. NASA is also the reason the vast majority of private space companies exist. Without NASA, SpaceX would have failed. It didn't have enough money to stay afloat on its own, but NASA gave it what it needed. And SpaceX isn't the only one. Nearly every private space company that isn't a scam is being paid by NASA in some way, in exchange for developing something for them. In the case of Axiom Space, it's the Artemis III spacesuit. For Boeing, it's the Boeing Starliner. For SpaceX, it's Starship, the ship that will land humans on the moon again during Artemis III, as well as Crew Dragon and reusable rockets. Private companies have only been able to innovate so much because of NASA. And more space development can only be good, as I've already shown. More satellites and more space stations will only go to benefit you. And space stations are easier to build if we build them on the moon, as I explain in other videos. So developing the moon will also benefit you, as it will allow larger space stations thanks to the vast amount of lunar materials, as well as how easy it is to launch rockets on the moon thanks to its low gravity and lack of an atmosphere. So that's good and all, but I still haven't addressed things like Mars rovers or moon missions, or missions to Jupiter and Saturn and any other planets. What are the benefits of those? For missions that aren't Earth-focused, the benefits are more indirect. For example, the recent Psyche mission, going to the asteroid also named Psyche, NASA recently tested a new method of communication using lasers, which was a success. This will drastically improve global satellite communication if this technology is implemented. The Mars rovers have to be sterilized to such an extreme that the Perseverance rover is the cleanest object in human history. All NASA missions inevitably create technologies that diffuse back into the economy, benefiting you. And it's not like that money spent on space missions leaves Earth, either. People like to complain that the NASA missions are too expensive, but that money is spent on paying workers and buying parts. All that money goes straight back into the economy. No money ever leaves. But even if this wasn't true, even if NASA missions didn't lead to any spin-off technologies or put money back into the economy, which they do both of, would it still not be worth it? To spend the smallest fraction of taxpayer money to know more about where we live? Less than half a percent of your tax money goes to NASA. NASA funding is so small compared to the military, it's barely a rounding error. NASA's budget sits around $20 billion, compared to the $800 billion of the military. For comparison, the Viper rover I mentioned earlier is being cancelled because of budget concerns. All in all, $800 million will be spent on it, even after it's cancelled, which is why cancelling it is stupid, but I digress. The United States military has enough money to build and launch 1,000 Viper rovers, while NASA is struggling to fly just one. This is why, even if NASA was just an absolute drain on society making nothing of value at all, which it isn't, I still don't see why people attack NASA when talking about wasting money. According to the Government Accountability Office, the US wasted $247 billion in 2022, 10 entire NASA's worth, on mistakes and incorrect payments. 
If you really want the government to stop wasting money, go after that. It's quite literally throwing hundreds of billions of dollars on accidentally paying people the wrong amount of money. The amount of money NASA is given compared to the amount of money the government wastes on mistakes and other things is completely negligible. Mega churches bring in more money than NASA gets every year. The global potato chip industry is twice the amount of money NASA gets from the government. Elon Musk is worth just under 10 NASAs. People who want to defund NASA are not only ignorant as to what NASA does for them, but have no idea how much money the US government actually wastes. NASA is not the bad guy. If you want more money to be spent on fighting poverty and hunger, getting that money from NASA will not help you. There are several other sources of money that contribute much less to society you should be trying to take from. Continuing to fund NASA and giving them more funding, not less, will only continue to make your life better. Just 0.5% of your taxes go to NASA. Cutting NASA funding will make your life worse, not better. Not to mention some people say NASA should be defunded so the money can go to actual issues like homelessness. Even ignoring the fact that NASA is literally at the forefront of fighting climate change, the biggest issue humanity faces today, this is also a bad reason. If NASA gets defunded, we all know that money is going straight to the military, not to solving issues. Not to mention, everything I said in this video is either already happening or extremely near-term future benefits. Just imagine what NASA and the companies it helps create could do in the long term. Colonizing the moon, as I've explained in other videos, would benefit you enormously. The moon has no atmosphere and low gravity, making it perfect to launch rockets from. Remember all the benefits of satellites and space stations I said earlier? Building and launching them on the moon, which is completely possible, the moon has more than enough resources, would make them only more effective. On the moon, you can build rockets that simply aren't possible on Earth. Imagine launching a space station multiple times the size of the ISS in a single launch. That's on the low side of what building and launching things on the moon could do for us. The moon will propel us into the future, giving us a true revolution in space technology, all of it directly making your life better. But to get to this future, which could be as soon as just a few decades out, NASA needs more funding. So hopefully this video has shown exactly what NASA does for the average person, and why it deserves more funding. If you ever see anyone advocating for the defunding of NASA, hopefully this video could change their mind. For just 0.5% of your tax money, NASA has created a revolution in everything from agriculture to connectivity to biotechnology to disaster relief, and these benefits will only get more and more pronounced, especially if we begin colonizing the moon. So let's do it. The more funding we get NASA, the better. It will only go to make the world a better place. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.